Hey everyone. So I want to talk today about something that I've been calling moral disagreement. So this is when you think that someone else in your community is behaving immorally, or someone else in your community thinks that you're behaving immorally. And I've uh, noticed more and more cases of this recently. Um, just to give some examples of the kinds of things that there's moral disagreement over. Eating meat or other animal products. Um, not voting not recycling, choosing to circumcise your child, uh, purchasing expensive luxury goods instead of donating that money to charity where it could be used to save lives. These are all actions that, in my experience, smart and reasonable people often disagree about, whether those actions are, are morally problematic or completely acceptable. And I've seen basically two approaches to navigating moral disagreement. The first is something that I call confrontation. So someone sees you eating meat or uh, sees you post a photo of a restaurant meal that has meat in it, and they you know, comment, hey, I see you're consuming the flesh of a sentient being. Uh, here's why I think that's a terrible thing to do. Or they send you an email saying, I hear you're planning to circumcise your child. Um, here's why I think that's uh, a barbaric practice. I'm not a big fan of confrontation as an approach to moral disagreement. And the reason is just that I think it makes it really hard to have communities. If you know that, you know, going to a picnic or posting photos of your life on Facebook means you're going to get attacked for, you know, what you're, you think is totally normal and fine, then, you know, we're not going to be inviting each other to picnics or uh, friending each other on Facebook. And this seems unfortunate. So uh, I've talked to some people who do advocate confrontation as a strategy, and I see where they're coming from. You know, uh, from their perspective, this act they're trying to uh, trying to stop is causing so much harm and so much suffering that, you know, if you have to incur a little bit of social friction uh, in the process of reducing that suffering and that harm, then that seems like a small price to pay, all things considered. And I get that. That makes sense. But at the same time, you know, most of us have things that we think other people are doing that are immoral. And if we all practice the strategy of confrontation, then everyone would be aggressively confronted constantly and, you know, there would be no picnics or, um, you know, friend groups at all, uh, except tiny little groups that all agreed with each other. Uh, so not a fan of confrontation. The second approach to moral disagreement that I've seen advocated often in reaction to someone being confrontational is what I've been calling tolerance. It's basically a laissez-faire, hands-off, live and let live policy, where people will say, you know, uh, look, we all have our attitudes about morality and that's fine, we're just gonna disagree, but everyone should mind their own business and let people make their own moral choices uh, personally for themselves. And this clearly has some advantages over confrontation as a strategy. We can have picnics and, you know, communities. At the same time, uh, it seems still not ideal to me not a huge fan of tolerance. It's better than confrontation. If I had to choose between everyone being confrontational or everyone being tolerant, I would choose the latter. But it still seems not great. Like we can do better, I think. Um, and the reason I say that is that I'd like our communities to be able to make moral progress over time. You know, there are practices that used to be completely commonplace in our society, like beating your wife or owning slaves and those practices are no longer considered acceptable in our society, which is good. Um, and I would like that process to continue happening. And on a personal level, I'm sure that there are things that I'm doing currently, which seem fine to me, which if I had more information and had, you know, access to, to more good arguments and the, the time to consider those arguments carefully and objectively, I would in fact conclude, yeah, that thing I've been doing is not really okay and I should stop. Um, I don't know necessarily what those things are, but like outside view, it seems unlikely that everything I'm doing currently is 100% correct. And uh, I would like to know, in theory, I'd like to know what those things are so that I can stop doing them. So I would like to be regularly coming into contact with um, arguments about why I should be doing something differently. So given that I think we want both basically harmonious communities and the opportunity for moral progress, what do we do? Well, I favor this third alternative to confrontation and to tolerance, 
that I've been calling engagement. So basically, if a community were to practice this policy, it would mean we, as a community, we discourage aggressive confrontation, but at the same time, we encourage and, you know, apply a little informal social pressure to people to opt in to engaging with their moral critics. So not constantly, but at least intermittently, reaching out to people to say, hey, uh, my understanding is you, um, you're a vegan and you think that my, you know, practice of eating meat is wrong. Um, I'd like to hear why, you know, and then listening in good faith, like with the attitude that they could be right and you could be wrong. And if, if that's the case, you want to know. Um, that's just a simple example of what it could look like to have a practice of, of moral engagement. Um, there could also be ideological Turing test days. Uh, I'll link to the ideolo ideological Turing test in the comments. Maybe I'll do a video about it. Uh, it probably deserves its own video. But it's basically a way to see if you actually really understand the arguments that the other side is making instead of some, you know, straw version of those arguments. Uh, I have other ideas for what a uh, social norm of, of moral engagement could look like. But what I mainly wanted to do in this video is just first point out that, you know, tolerance is usually the policy that I've seen people advocate. And I don't think it's an ideal policy. Uh, that's not to say that having a policy of moral engagement would necessarily be easy or quick uh, to foster those norms. But I think it's important to at least acknowledge that uh, striving for a pure laissez-faire moral tolerance policy is not actually the best thing to strive for. So I've been starting to try to uh, encourage norms of moral engagement in my social circles. I've seen some people doing this already, which is great. Uh, it's not necessarily the norm, um, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to push things more in that direction. And I'll keep you guys posted about what I try and what happens. Uh, and in the meantime, I'd be curious to hear if anyone has any ideas uh, either for how to encourage this kind of social norm or, you know, if you disagree with me about this being a, a good thing to strive for or there being a better fourth way or something like that. I'd like to hear it. But for now, this is the takeaway. Three ways of navigating these situations of moral disagreement. Confrontation, which uh, can push the process of, of moral progress, but can also fracture communities. Tolerance, which uh, preserves social harmony, but at the expense of moral progress. And my preferred third way of moral engagement, where people opt in to uh, engaging with their own moral critics.